ZFTP is one of the two ways that Zwift uses to categorize you into either A, B, C or D, the other being in ZMAP. And today we're going to have a look at how I think it's calculated, including how you can reduce your category while increasing your power. If you log on to Zwift.com, you'll find your power metrics at various intervals. There's 30 seconds, 1 minute, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes and 30 minutes. If you just take the middle four of those, so 3, 5, 12 and 20, and put them into Excel, you can make a nice little graph which shows your power curve based on those numbers. To get your ZFTP, effectively it's an extrapolation of those of those numbers or it's a best fit line. Now that's a curvy line and curvy lines are quite hard to do best fits to. So what we do in order to flatten that line is to take the log, the natural log of the time and then what we get is something that looks like this from numbers wise so the um, the middle column is the natural log of the time values and if we put that in a chart then it's a lot nearer to a straight line and that makes it easier to do a trend line so if we just take that on its own then then we can apply a trend line to it, which we can do in Excel, but also you can do with formulas, the trend trend function in particular. And then that we can transfer that back into minutes. And if we look, um, I have had a look at a few people's values to see how this works out. And what it seems is that you can put these numbers into a table and if you look at about the 30 to 32 minutes I think it's probably about 30 30 minutes that they take um, my my ZFTP is 270 so these are my um, these are my power numbers and this is my calculation and pretty much that's how they make the calculation of um, ZFTP I've tried it with six people now and I've always been within about 1% um, obviously some of these values are rounded and I think they may be using an additional value, maybe using 8 minute power as well, uh, which we can't see. And from that, you'll be able to work out, if you change your power, what exactly that would do to your category. I've put together a spreadsheet which shows how these calculations were performed and we'll share this on our Google Drive. And it enables you to go in and put in your power numbers or even theoretical power numbers and see what your ZFTP is estimated at. So here I've got my power numbers in there and you can see that if I changed uh, my three minute power you should see that the power curve in the top right steepens so if I change it from 421 to 440 it steepens a bit. I still uh, remain a B but if it was to go up to 480, it really steepens. And if I go to 490, it steepens so much that it actually extrapolates my um, 30 minute power or 32 minute power to being 242. And that would make me a C again. So all I need to do is put out uh, 490 watts for three minutes, which I won't be doing anytime soon. But it just shows you there's a, if you're already a, a sort of edge case, then that could actually uh, drop you down power by um, drop you down a category just by increasing your three minute power. We could also imagine a scenario where a rider is just below the category boundary. So this example is of a theoretical person called Bagger and they're just below the threshold for moving into the A category which is 4.2 and they might notice that if they were to put out too big an effort a 20 minute effort say of 340 then that would move them up so they might think oh what if I did 335 oh it'd still be okay what if I did 337 oh it'd still be okay 338 still okay 339 oh it's 339 now this is just a, an approximation, as I say, there are 1% here and there, but in theory uh, someone could do a similar calculation to get a rough idea of what they 
have to avoid doing to go up a category. Uh, don't endorse this really, but um, you could in theory use it that way. So we'll share this document, have a play and tell us what you think.